Hi everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're going to be talking about the Aikman test. Before we get started, I want to remind you to please hit subscribe, hit the bell icon to get notifications to get a lot of biology study videos. So let's get started with this one on the Aikman test. This is actually a really old test, okay? It was developed by a Dutch professor named Christian Aikman it was originally published in 1904. The original publication was in German. Uh, Christian Aikman um, eventually went on to actually win the Nobel Prize uh, with another scientist for his contribution to the discovery of vitamins. So that's kind of your fun factoid for today. But specifically with the Aikman test, which really has nothing to do with vitamins, uh, it is it has two other names by which it's known. One is the differential coliform test, and it's also known as the confirmed E. coli test or the, infer or the confirmed E. coli count test. Now, before we jump into the purpose and methods of the Aikman test, I just want to remind you what we, what we mean by coliforms, okay? So coliforms are rod-shaped bacteria, so bacillus-shaped. They are gram-negative. If you need a reminder of the difference between gram-positive and gram-negative cell walls, then please check out my video, gram-positive versus gram-negative bacteria. So coliforms are rod-shaped, they're gram-negative bacteria that can ferment lactose and other sugars and they're present in large numbers in feces. Um, not just human feces, but like animal feces in general. And so coliforms are important because they can be used as a convenient indicator for fecal contamination. And what we mean by that is if you have a water source and it's been contaminated by feces, then there will be, there will be fecal coliforms in the water. So if you can detect fecal contamination, sorry, if you can, can if you can detect fecal coliforms, then you can know that there was fecal contamination and that there could be other fecal bacteria, other fecal pathogens present as well. So just to kind of put this in perspective, you know, I think we're used to thinking of E. coli. Of course, some E. coli is pathogenic, but certainly not all E. coli. There's plenty of E. coli that does not cause any disease. So some E. coli are pathogenic. E. coli are a type of fecal coliform, but there are other types of fecal coliforms as well. And then of course there are also coliforms that are not fecal, I meaning they're, they're not present in feces. But when we're talking about fecal contamination and fecal coliforms, we're usually thinking of things like E. coli, Klebsiella, Enterobacter, and so forth. So these would be three major examples of fecal coliforms. So now that we understand what coliforms are, let's go back to talking about the Aikman test. Its purpose is to determine if a water source has been contaminated by fecal coliform bacteria, specifically from warm blooded animals. So either from humans or from warm blooded non-human animals. And this is based on the ability of the bacteria to produce gas when grown in glucose media at 46 degrees Celsius. So this particular set of, of, um, of circumstances will only allow gas production if there are fecal coliform bacteria present from warm-blooded animals. Fecal coliforms may be present um, in, in cold-blooded, from cold-blooded animals, or coliforms that are present just like naturally in an environment but not from feces will not produce gas when grown in glucose media at 46 degrees. So now let's look at the method. The method is to inoculate a glucose peptone broth. I will say that some um, like alternative or modified forms of the Aikman test will use a lactose peptone broth. Um, but I think the standard is glucose peptone broth in a test tube that, this is really important, that contains a durum tube. So 
So the durum tube is there to collect gas if it's produced. Of course, if there's no production of gas, you get a negative result. Um, there'd be no gas in that durum tube. This is what a durum tube looks like. You've got the larger test tube that has that glucose peptone bra, and you have this small durum tube like floating inside. And it is, it is, um, it'll basically kind of start out like at the bottom of the tube, but if when that media is inoculated and the bacteria in it are producing that gas, that gas that we're looking for, for a positive Aikman test, then the, that gas will begin to create bubbles, which I'm kind of drawing here. And some of those bubbles from that gas production will float into the Durham tube and actually cause it to like rise up and be floating at the surface with gas trapped inside of it. So that is why the Durham tube is so important is because it collects the gas that you would not otherwise be able to see. So first you have to inoculate the broth in a test tube that contains a Durham tube. Then you have to incubate it for over 24 hours at 46 degrees. And again, if you've got uh, gas production, that that would be a positive result. And that is considered a presumptive identification. So presumptive, uh, pre presumptive identification of E. coli means that we are presuming that there is E. coli based on presence of gas in the Durham tube. However, it is not an absolute certainty. And so it must be followed up with another test to actually confirm that E. coli is present. There are two tests that one could use to make this, this, conf this confirmation of the E. coli identification. And that is either the indole test and or the citrate test. Now I actually have separate full length videos on the indole test and a separate full length video on the citrate test and even more full length videos on lots of other microbiological tests. And so definitely remember to subscribe and check out those other videos. I've also started posting photographs, or not photographs, I guess, but PDFs with pictures of the final notes board. Uh, and so if you want the link to that, please grab it in the video description and you can find basically PDF versions of all of my board notes. So thank you for watching Biology Professor. Subscribe and I will see you next time for more awesome biology lessons. Thank you for watching.